Hello, my name is Vignesh, and this is going to be Matt Lecture 15 in the Matt Lecture series. Today we'll be going over the last huge math topic, which is trigonometry. So trigonometry is a pretty complex subject. I guess like, some people take spend a whole year on this, like in high school. However, you only need to know like the very basics of trigonometry, and the first of which is Sogatoro, which represents the three main trigonometric functions. These are sine, cosine, and tangent. And it's shown as sine, cos, tan. Like you write, write it that way. And yeah, so basically, if we have like a triangle like we have right here, then, and again, this is going to be a right triangle because it's trigonometry, it really is associated with right triangles. You can have like a, a obtuse angle, like a sine of an obtuse angle, but if we're, but like in this case, if we're solving for a trigonometric function, you're usually using a right triangle. So yeah, so let's say I have this angle theta. Theta also, by the way, it's, like, it's basically like the same as x, but in, like, it's a variable, basically that stands for an angle. So you have angle theta, so sine of theta will equal opposite over adjacent. We'll see opposite over adjacent. So not opposite over hypotenuse, otherwise. Tangent is opposite, adjacent, o opposite over adjacent, and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And how you memorize this is using Sokotoa. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Sokotoa. Basically, it's an acronym people use. And and how this like usually comes in this? If we use something like a right a special right triangle, like let's say I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle right here. Then I know this is going to be like a one or like a like a, a, a ratio. But since we're dividing over sides, it doesn't matter like what the ratio. If we we need to do the simplest terms, that's going to be one. That's going to be root three, and it's going to be two. So we know that sine thirty is going to be one over two, and sine sixty is going to be two over root three, which is the same. Sorry, root three over root three over two. My mistake. So yeah, that's basically basically using using special by triangles. You you can like you should sort of have your sine of you should have the sine, cosine, and tangent of 30, 60, and 45 memorized. So it's easy, it's easy, so you can go fast on SAT. However, if you don't have them memorized, then you would want to then then you can always use a special by triangle to like refresh your memory. There are also trig identities which are basically like formula like special formulas that you can use with trig. One of them is sine theta equals cosine 90 minus theta. This basically just means that if you have a, like the sine of this angle, right, the sine of this angle right here is the same as the cosine of this angle right here, it's called y. So sine theta is the same as cosine y. It's basically just like, yeah, so like if you have sine of, sine of 60 will be equal to cosine 30. Which you can see right here, because sine thirty, sorry, sine sixty is root three over two, but sine thirty is root three over two. So yeah. The other one you need to know is that tan tan theta is sine theta sine theta over cosine theta. This is just simple, like tan equals sine over cosine. Okay, and now we also need to know about quadrants. So let's say you had a graph like this and as I said before you you, you can have like the sine of an angle greater than that greater than it greater than just 90 like yeah so for example let's say you had sine of this angle right here it, it can, like this angle right here well we, we this is when we use the quadrants so sorry yeah. this is quadrant one this is quadrant two this is quadrant three and this is quadrant four. So what we know is, is that in quadrant one, like if it's an angle like this or like this, then all, then all, then all, then like sine, tangent, and cosine are all gonna be positive. However, if it's in quadrant two, then just sine is gonna be positive. So here all of them are positive, here just sine, in this in this quadrant quadrant three, just tangent is positive, and this quadrant just cosine is positive. So A S, S T C. How I remember this is I think of the phrase all students take calc 
even though not all students do take calc, that I just think about all students take calc. There's a, there's a number of like ways to memorize it, but that's, just, that's how I was taught. So A S T C. You can think of your own like device if you want to, but I just use all students take calc. But yeah, so so if I have an angle like right here. And let's say this is, um, what's it? Let me let me think. Um, one twenty. You might be thinking, how how do I do, how would I solve this? Right, because you don't know what what sine one twenty is. However, what you do know is that you do know what sine sixty is. Sine sixty is. Sine sixty, if you go back up to here, is root three over two. Sine 120 is also root is is also root, positive root 3 over 2. So basically, what you would do what you do there is you you take you do 180 minus your larger angle, so 120, and you get 60. And if it was something like this, you would do 360, like you, you would do 270. I mean, so basically that, that's so that's basically how you do that, and you and you would get that since that is equal to 60, you know that it's equal to sine 60, but the sine so like like if it's positive or negative, depending on what quadrant it is. So because it's because it's 120 is equal to sine 60, and it's in quadrant two, which is where sine is positive, we know it's positive root three over two. However, if it was in the third quadrant right here, so something like that, then it would be negative root three over two. I hope that sort of makes sense, of like how sine works. But yeah, so now let's go on a couple of practice problems. And again, these practice problems are from a text, like a, a SAT book called College Panda. I highly suggest you can click the link in the description of this or Google Classroom post and get your own book if you want more in-depth like, notes and practice problems. But yeah, so what I want to do is number one, if cosine 40 equals A, what is sine 50 in terms of A? So right off the bat, I know that 40 plus 50 equals 90. And since they equal 90, that means I know sine of 50 is going to be equal to cosine 40, which means that sine 50 equals A. Do you know what I want to go over is number five? If 10x equals M, what is sine x in terms of M? So let's say, so how I want to draw this is when I see them like with this 10x is the upper and what is sine x? What you first want to do is you want to draw something like this. And I have, let's say I have this angle, and this is a right triangle. So if I know 10 is m and 10 is opposite over adjacent, that means the ratio is going to be m and it's going to be 1 because m over 1 is equal to m. And this is m and this is 1. Then that means using the Pythagorean theorem, I can solve it. This is going to be m squared plus 1 and the square root of m squared plus 1. Now, if I want to know what sine of the x is, I can just use the same, the same proportions. So sine is adjacent is opposite of a hypotenuse. This is going to be m over square root of m squared plus one. Usually you have to multiply both sides by square root of m squared plus one so you can make it a radical. Like because you can you usually can't have a radical on the new denominator, but in this case the answer choice is allowed for it. So we know c is the right answer. Otherwise it would have been something like m root m squared plus one over m squared plus one. I I literally just Multiply, multiply top and bottom by square root m, m squared plus one. So I can get so, I, so the radicals on the top instead of the bottom. Finally, I want to go over number 11. So we have this circle right here. In the figure above, AC is diameter of the circle. If AC is equal to one, which of the following gives the area of a triangle ABC in terms of theta? So I since this is a set, this is like the semi, this triangle, if a triangle is inscribed, in the semi in the in the semicircle of a of, of what's it called of a circle that then that means that this angle is a right angle so how i know that how i know it's inscribed is if all three points touch the circle as well as the the hypotenuse is the diam is the diameter of the circle since that is true that i know this is a right triangle which means that if this is, if ac is 1 and then sine theta is just equal to a B over one, which means sine theta is equal to A B. And 
cosine theta is equal to BC over one adjacent over hypotenuse, which means cosine theta is equal to BC. And if you want to find the area of a right triangle, you just do one half times si times the two legs, which is sine theta times cosine theta over two. That's one half, which is why D is the right answer there. So I hope this like basically shows that you have to, like, like, it won't be like a simple home like what sine sixty. Obviously, you can have something simple like that, but it's more it's more just using like the, the basic principles of trig and using into and trying to find out like usually if you have a right triangle, there's some there's some there's usually like some sort of trig or Pythagorean theorem or something like that. So if you're dealing with angles and like something like that, always think about like trig. And also in most of these examples, these were in degrees. However, obviously, as I said before, in trig you see a lot of radians, and radians is just a degree like 50 degrees. You multiply it by pi over 180 to convert it into radians. So like 60 degrees is pi over three radians. It's just, it's just a different like it's basically like how feet and meters are like they represent the same like measurement, but they're like different units. So that's basically it for this lesson. Hope you guys learned something. If you have any further questions, you can leave a comment in the video. And that's basically it. Wish you the best of luck. And yeah, good luck.